friends, welcome back to AUPSC. Today we are going to start with a new concept of economic geography that is growth pole theory. So let's get started. So we will start with the growth pole theory. First we will understand the growth pole theory that was given by Perox and then we will understand the modification that was done by Bordeville's, Bordeville's okay. So first we will start with Perux. Now, Francois Perux, he gave this growth pole theory in 1955, okay, and he was a French regional economist, okay, so he was a regional economist of France, okay. Now his theory, or he was basically concerned with the phenomena of economic development and the processes that are involved in the structural changes, okay. So, all the economic development and the process of structural changes that are associated with all these things was basic concern of Peru. Okay. Now, in this theory, he attempted to explain how the modern processes, okay, how the modern processes of economic growth, they deviate from the stationary conception of equilibrium growth. Okay. So, previously there were models like stationary conception of equilibrium growth okay so they told about how the growth is in a equilibrium form okay but now he tried to modify this okay or his model was deviated from this thought and he gave the modern processes he explained the modern processes how the modern processes work in economic growth okay now if you look at the concept of this growth pole theory. Now this theory, it states that any growth that takes place, it basically occurs towards a specific location, which results in discontinuous growth and location. See, like for example, we have a national highway, okay, NH. Now this NH, we say the area around NH, they develop. But it is not like that all the areas that are around NH, they will develop equally, okay. Some of the clusters, they might develop like they may build up very huge industries and all that, while others, they are left vacant, okay. So, this concept, it tries to say that this growth is in a form of a cluster, okay. It is discontinuous. It is not everywhere like uniformly distributed, okay. They this growth actually occurs in specific location, okay? So, that is what this theory tries to explain. Now, growth can be divided on the basis of economic space, okay? So, he says that growth can be divided on the basis of economic space and economic space, if you understand, they have following characteristics, okay? First is, they are having homogeneous nature. Like, if we talk about one ho economic space, it will have a homogeneous nature, okay? Then it will have an economic plan. How will it grow, okay? So, it will have an economic plan. Then, force which communicate within the elements, okay? So, it will be having a force that will communicate each element, like one element with the other, okay? They are interconnected, okay? So, they are interconnected. See, like for example, if we take any steel plant. So, steel plant, if we take, see, the area, whole industrial area will be having a homogeneous nature. Like all the industries that are located here, they will be having some sort of relation with the steel plant, okay? Economic plant, they will be having a certain economic plant that the steels are produced and how they have to be distributed in automobile industry and tools industries and all okay so all these economic plants will be there okay and because they are interrelated to each other in one form or the other so there was a will be a force which communicate these elements like tool industry automobile industry okay steel industry they will be interconnected okay there will be a communication between the between these companies, okay, or these industries, sorry. Now, for understanding 
this whole concept the sorry peru he considered two basic aspects as a base of his theory okay first aspect was theory of development and another was inter industrial linkages okay now the theory of development it states that growth is not seen everywhere but it is in a form of uh, aggregate or a poles okay like we have this nh and here we can see the growth okay so growth is not seen everywhere we can't see growth everywhere it will be seen in a form of a cluster okay an agglomerate okay so this is the theory of development then another one is inter industrial linkages okay so the area which is developing all the industries that are set up okay all the industries that will be set up they will be having some sort of linkages from one another okay like one industry will be dependent on another for some other other purpose like an output of one industry will be input for another one okay like we have a farm that is growing cotton okay now cotton is a output for farmer now for the cotton mill industry it will be a input then it will make cloth from it okay now this cloth or textile we will say it will be turned into a finished product by other industry like it will be we will have like we can say say puma okay so this industry or this factory will convert these clothes into t-shirts sports t-shirts lowers etc okay so we can see that all these industries they are linked with one another another okay so there is inter industrial linkages so these are the two basic aspects that are the base of this theory that this whole growth pole will be based on theory of development that there will be an agglomerate development of a region okay there will be a agglomerate which will be developed and there will be a discontinuous development it will not be a uniform development of the whole area okay next is the inter industrial linkages so these are the two basic aspects now after the aspect we will look into three main factors of growth pole theory okay so these three main factors are external economies agglomeration and linkages okay so these are the three main basic factors of growth pole theory now first before understanding these let us briefly understand the whole growth pole theory okay like consider this to be an iron industry and this one to be a coal industry okay iron and coal okay now the another industry that will be set up that is steel industry okay it can set up in between these two industries okay it can set up near the iron industry or it can set up near the coal industry okay like for example it sets up near the iron industry so we have steel industry that is set up near the iron industry now see what happens because of steel industry we will see that various interrelated industries like we have tool industry okay we have tools industry tools and machinery automobile 
Now, because there is automobile industry, there will be tire industry like tire industry, glass industry. Okay. Then we will have another industry which is related to steel, like we have circuit industry. Okay. Like this, we will have many industries that will grow near these areas. Okay, now because here we have circuit industry, we will have various IT sectors. Now because we have IT sectors and because we will require a lot of infrastructure to develop these, we will have cement industry. So we can see how this whole area is growing. Okay, now one by one we can see all the clusters growing and there will be some industries that will be developed near this cold region as well okay so we will have this whole cluster we can see that this whole cluster is growing so here we will have iron industry this is our basic industry iron and coal industry okay now around these we will have another industries And we will have this. Okay. So this is where we can see agglomeration. Okay. All these are agglomerating near the main specific region. Okay. Main specific industry. This is the main firm or we can say main industry. Okay. And there will be linkages in these industries. Okay. So these industries will be interrelated with each other in one way or the other okay now this was our growth pool theory okay diagrammatic explanation so we have external economies external economies they exist if a change in output of one firm okay like there is change in output of one firm like iron industry it it actually starts producing less iron okay then the cost of other firm or cost this cost will be affecting the other firms okay so iron industry if it pr starts producing if it starts producing iron less okay it now what will happen steel industry will be directly affected okay because see steel industry it requires iron okay now if iron supply is less then what will happen this overall steel production will be less okay now other countries because the steel production will be less they will be affected by this whole decrease in production okay so this is how external economies they affect the whole growth pole okay so they can affect in both positive and negative manner okay like if the production is more okay like if the production is more then what we will see that all the industries will get more raw material and they will produce more and if the production is less then all the industries they will get less raw material hence the production will decrease next is our agglomeration agglomeration as we can see the industries they are set up near the main industry main firm okay why because see they are dependent on the main industry okay for this if this industry develop they will develop near it because it will decrease their transportation cost okay it will decrease the cost of labor see because we have so much industries that are set up here so we will have obviously we will have labor supply here okay so the proximity with the or we can have a cheap labor in all the industries okay now along with cheap labor we will have infrastructure and we will have routes for infrastructural development okay so like we have cement industry here we will have architectural groups all these like all the requirements for infrastructure we will have here 
okay and there will be roads communication well set up so all these things because they are already existing the infrastructure is already existing in a good like in a good state that is why all these industry they will have an easy access to the market and they can communicate easily okay so now because of agglomeration we can see there is minimum cost that is involved then we will have industrial proximity see all the industries they are established close by okay so they because they are established close by that is why we can see that the transportation cost will decrease okay anything which is required from this industry to this industry it will be supplied easily then we will have infrastructure development labor supply all these things will be already existing here because we have already an iron industry that was set up okay so this is agglomeration now lastly we have linkages linkages now as we can see all these industries that are here they are highly connected with each other they depend on each other okay so there is a dependency there is a connectivity linkage between all these industry now this linkage can be of two type that is forward linkage and backward linkage okay now forward linkage forward linkage we will see that here the investment will be like steel industry the in investment will be in the subsequent stage of production okay so it can either be by transmitting innovation or affect the innovation forward okay so a industry has three industries that is like steel industry has circuit industry it industry glass industry for example so it has three industries so if the investment is done in all these three industry then we will have more industrial growth okay more industrial and innovative growth of this whole area okay so now because the investment is in a forward direction that means it is in the successive industries that is why this linkage is known as forward linkage while in others we have backward linkage backward linkage it basically means here the industries they encourage investment in the earlier stage like we have three industry efg they are based on h industry okay now if they will invest in the h industry then the output will enhance the growth of all these three industry okay so for this the investment is in the backward direction that means the investment is in a earlier stage that is why this whole linkage is known as backward linkage okay so i hope you, I hope you understand all these three basic factors of growth pole theory now this growth pole as we have studied it leads to propulsive growth okay it leads to propulsive growth that means there will be one industry like here we have steel industry or iron industry we can say which will be in a leading position okay which will be having a more power amongst all the industries okay now this propulsive growth will lead to polarization okay now polarization means development occurring in a specific place which is the basic concept or this is what is explained in the growth pole theory okay so propulsive growth can be of two type first is dynamic and another one is leading the dynamic one will have power in innovation okay so it will be a very innovative it will like because as the name suggests it is dynamic so it will try to change its technology and it will try to innovate its technology and it will actually have technological advancement 
okay it will be large fast growing and have a huge interrelation with the other industries while the leading world one will have advanced technology okay it will already have advanced technology and it will lead other industries okay so it will be the head and there will be a multiplication effect because of this leading industry like because of iron there is steel industry because of steel industry there is all these industries okay so there will be a multiplication effect and there will be strong inter industrial linkages in between all these industry okay here we will have larger area there will be huge industrial linkages while here will we will have strong inter industrial linkages like if one factor is removed then other one will not be able to function properly okay so there will be strong inter industrial linkages while here we will have huge industri inter industrial linkages now growth pool see like here we have growth pool now along with them we will we can see that there will be a development of secondary growth pool like for example we will have if the steel industry was set up here then steel industry will lead to a secondary growth pool where this is the major growth pool while the the small area that is steel industry area will have the industries growing nearby it but this secondary growth pool will not have so much to develop or it will not be so large that it can overpower this primary growth pool okay so this is our primary growth pool or this is our major growth pool while this one is our secondary growth pool so this was the whole concept of perot's growth pool theory now bordevilles what he did was he modified perot's theory of growth pool okay actually the geographical aspect was put or was this growth pool theory was related to geography by bordevilles okay he was the one who brought this growth pool theory in the geographical context now according to him the growth pool is a propulsive firm that exists in two forms first is expanding firm and another one is dominating firm okay like we have this dynamic and leading same as this one okay then he classified the economies under three heads first is economy internal to the firm then we have economies that are external to the firms and internal to the industries and lastly we have economies that are external to the industries but they are internal to urbanization so these were the three main heads on which he classified the economies now this was the whole concept of growth pool theory so people they started using this growth pool theory this was very popular theory in its time but it was criticized as well okay first criticism was this theory was unapplicable to the regional problems that exist okay so all the regional problems it was not the, like it was not explaining any physical phenomenon like earthquake and other things any natural disaster so it was not including all these things in this theory okay so because it was not explaining or it was not applicable in the region which have some specific regional problems that is why this whole concept was criticized and this whole concept is functionally a rigid one okay so because of its rigidity also this concept was criticized so this was about the growth pool theory that was all for today guys i hope you enjoyed today's lecture let's meet in our next class till then take care and have a nice day thank you